Hi, and I'm super excited to be able to share with you our Christmas lessons that we've prepared for this year, ready for Advent, ready for first December, which is sneaking up on us quicker than we can imagine. So if you haven't already done so, can I encourage you to head over to the website at truewaykids.com and there you can download this week's lesson and print it off and you can follow along. So each week we upload um, a lesson from the Bible. This past year we've been looking at the Old Testament and now we're doing special seeds for Christmas over the next five weeks. And then next year we'll be going into the New Testament together. So if you haven't done so, you can sus subscribe also on the website and there you'll get an email each Friday with the newest lesson in. So yeah, we started a five part series and to tie in where we left off with our series for the Old Testament and going into the New Testament, we're going to look at our first one is this is waiting for Christmas. And it's looking at how in the Old Testament was the people were waiting for Jesus. We're going to see how some of the prophecies that were made in the Old Testament were fulfilled in Jesus' birth. Just to tie in both, we are going to cover a few of the Old Testament um, passages we didn't have chance to this past year in the coming year we'll throw them in as extra bonuses for you so once you download this week's lesson you can see the front cover there is waiting for christmas and there you'll see the manger and the stable and it's empty before jesus has of course arrived as you go into the lesson on the first page is the introduction there's a qr code and i'll take you to some useful videos which i found on youtube animations which help to tell as well of the prophecies how jesus fulfilled them in relation to his Birth. So we're going to see some of the main points is God fulfills things in his timing. So people have been waiting for a long time, but God's timing is always perfect. We're going to see that we need to be patient, but we're going to see that God always keeps his promises, even when we need to wait for him, and that God has a plan. So throughout you, you'll see many um, games, activities, things to do, things to relate, things to reflect on that preschoolers can really relate to. So a lot of activities actually spread over two pages. Um, this week and there's a preview of the rest of our Christmas series so this week is the prophecies related to Jesus which for Christmas next week we're going to be looking at the angel appears to Mary and Mary going to see Elizabeth and um, Zachariah and then we're going to see the trip to Bethlehem and there's no room for Jesus in week three week four we're going to look at the shepherds then after Christmas so the Friday following Christmas we're going to look at the wise men and Herod and how they had two very different responses to Jesus's birth so also include the apart from this number of games activities which are in a lesson guide and some which tie into the future lessons there is also games activities one of them is to visit a historic place why i think this would be a great idea is because we're talking about the prophecies that were written hundreds thousands of years before jesus was born and yet jesus filled them and to try and get an idea for our preschoolers to see the gap of time we can go to a historic place if you can't do that have a look at some book, um, photos online of the pyramids or in books or of um, Rome, maybe ancient Rome. I'm trying to think about, imagine what it must have been like to live in this time. Talk about the things which they had that we don't have or vice versa. And then talk about, could they even imagine what today must be like and yet how the prophecies were fulfilled in Jesus. One important note that I mentioned in the lesson guide is to show that the prophets couldn't tell the future. They weren't predicting the future, but rather they were given a message by God about the future. So there's a difference there and it's important we teach this to our children. So the next one is to buy or make an advent calendar. It's a tradition I used to love as a kid to wake up each day and open a door in the advent calendar. You can be more traditional, also have um, a candle which you would just burn a part off each day. Whatever works good with your family tradition is great, but just to realise a countdown waiting for Jesus' birth or waiting for Christmas. And then finally is to bake some Christmas snacks. So again I would teach patience of waiting for something to be ready and how God's time is always perfect. So talking of Advent brings on to some of the worksheets we've got in this week's lesson. The first one is this, join up the Christmas lights. So you'll see between number one and number two is a um, cable going and they need to follow the line rows to draw a cable to three, four, five, six and so on. Counting down all the days until the 25th of Christmas day. Once it's all done, you colour in all the lights and make them look as Christmassy and as beautiful as possible. Then again, working on time. There's two versions of clock worksheets. This is what is the time, so they need to follow the number and write it next to o'clock. And below is the other and the answers you're seven they would have to draw the hour round to point to um, whichever time is shown below so seven three and six and so on again just to help our preschoolers to learn the time and realize about god's perfect timing again based on time it's not only hours but also weeks and days of the weeks so it's a simple one monday tuesday wednesday cut them out and put them in order now it doesn't um the colors match so there's red to match with red blue to match with blue and that will help them to order the days of the week easily what i've also included in this week's lesson is this this is a guide of how to use it the next one so 
here are some Christmas character cards. Let me give you the preview of them. So there's number one, there's number two, and there's number three. So you'll see the shepherds, a wise men, you see King Herod, Zachariah, um, some of the animals in the stable. So this page here covers a couple of ways which you can use these cards. What we're going to do, and this kind of family edition now, is to cut out the cards and each day we will hide one in a different place around the house. Then as Timothy wakes up in the day, his challenge will be to hunt down a new character. It, eventually we will have all um, 25 characters. So this is going to be what we can do. I know some people play Elf on the Shelf or do different activities, follow the wise men. This is what we do. If you want to join us with this, just cut them out. Each day hide one character around your house and, fi and find them. If you're doing it in a Sunday school or at the church setting, you could also cut them all out and have it as a game. So there would be the 25 cards around the room or around the church and the kids must hunt them down just at that very moment. You could also use these cards as story aids. So if you're reading the Christmas accounts in your Bible, you could reflect on them and show the characters to help the child picture the scene. There's a matching pair game. If you print two copies of the cards, you can take turns to chew them over. If you don't remember where they are, match them up. Snap is a classic game as well. You can print off a couple of copies and then just play Snap with them. And who are my yes or no? So that would be you would one you would pick up one card by random. The other people must answer ask questions, sorry, and the person with the card can only say yes or no. And the other must guess who in the entity scene or a Christmas story they are. If you have any other ideas or suggestions of how we can use these lessons, share them with us. We'd love to share them with others as well. So to bless them. And talking about the prophecies of Jesus, maybe the most famous one is from Isaiah 9 verse 6, which says, For unto us a child is born, the son is given, the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, taken from Isaiah 9 verse 6. So what we're going to do to help remember this, and there's a coloring page as well as a craft for this week, is some Christmas baubles. So what you would do first of all is colour all these in, make them look as Christmassy as you want. You can even add glitter. Yes, I said a glitter. If you don't mind to use glitter in your church or at home, add some glitter with glue, colour them all in. Once it's done, cut them out and thick card would be better. Use a hole punch to make hole punches here. You tie a piece of string for it and you can hang it around your house or on your uh, Christmas tree or wherever. It's good. And just remember how Jesus fulfilled the prophecies of Isaiah as well as many of the others. So a big part of this week's craft is um, going to be a make your own nativity. So there's two versions of the nativity scene and the instructions are here below. I've created the version which you can um, print off. So the nativity stable itself, you'd have to print two and cut them out, glue them back to back. But it's a black and white version, as you see here with all the characters in black and white. So there you would obviously, you would just color in all the characters. And once it's all colored in, cut them out and assemble them as before. But also, if you haven't got time, we don't fancy colouring in all the pictures, there is a pre-coloured version for you as well, which you can just print off and colour them all in. So you'll see uh, Mary Joseph Donkey, the manger, baby Jesus, and some of the animals which might have been in the stable, the shepherds, um, Elizabeth, Zachariah, there's um, the infant Jesus, which will come later for when the wise men visit him. Some of the angels which appear to Mary and also, also the shepherds in the field. The um, wise man with some of the camels. And the last picture, wise man with the rest of the camels. So it's really easy to do. I have an example here for you. So once you print the stable, um, glue it back to back. Obviously colour it in first if you're using the colour yourself version. And there's your stable scene. Now I will add some more houses throughout the week and some um, trees for the wise men as well to build out to the scene. But you can also just flip it around so you can use this as their house and this as the stable. So use some of again just how they done. So they got flaps at the bottom you can fold out. To make it even more rigid, what you can do is put a bit of a ring have you on the back like so. It's just a cardboard ring. And that will give it some more stability if they are falling over. You could also just glue them onto some heavy objects or glue them all down onto a piece of paper if you don't want to move them around. But it's quite nice to move them around and to act out the Christmas story as you're telling it. So here you see some of the um, characters, the sheep and the shepherds and so on. Um, again, as I mentioned, what we will do personally, but it's obviously up to you and your family, we will leave the manger empty until Christmas Day. And then on Christmas Day, um, we will put in the baby Jesus into the manger. But again, you can do what works good for you. Then later, to tell a story, when we get to the wise men, we will change the scene around a little bit. And there we have an infant Jesus 
which we will put into the scene at that time but again do whatever works best for your um, family and for your church setting and just finally on the last page again there is some christmas songs that fit in with this week's lesson as well there's some more songs as well on the um, youtube playlist which is linked below as well as the animation videos some prayer things then next week talking about how we're going to see mary and um, the angel appearing to her going to see elizabeth and so on well i really pray that you have a blessed christmas season that this lesson will really bless you as you help your child to understand the importance of christmas of jesus coming to save us from our sins to save the world well god bless you and any questions comments we'd love also to see some photos of the crafts that you're making your worksheets your nativity scenes once you set them up have a great time i'll see you next week for our next lesson god bless